Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Sutton. This is part two of the lesson on forces and Newton's laws and in this video I'll be going through an example of how to resolve forces for two masses being uh, carried, lifted in a scale pan. So here we have a light scale pan, that's what one looks like by the way, students often don't know what they look like when we have scale pan questions, uh, is attached to a vertical light inextensible string. Uh, the scale pan carries two masses A and B. Uh, the mass of A is 300 grams uh, and the mass of B is 560 grams. Mass A rests on top of mass B. Uh, the scale pan is raised vertically using the string with acceleration 0 0.8 meters per second per second. And the first thing we're being asked to do is to find the tension in the string. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is to uh, draw a big diagram. Uh, I'm going to draw a big triangle to represent the scale pan. Let's just uh, resize that a little bit, it's not just as big as that. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to draw uh, two masses, um, A and B. Uh, so that could be Mass B and that can be mass A. Uh, and then we have a vertical string that is holding up the scale pan. Uh, and it said mass A rests on top of mass B. Yeah, lovely. So this is mass A and this is mass B. Okay. Now What's going on with this system? What forces have we got um, acting on the system? Well, we have uh, a tension force in the string that's raising the scale pan. Uh, we have the weight of A um, and we have the weight of B. Um, now what I'm going to do for the purpose of the first one um, is I'm going to draw both of them uh, like so, but label them separately. Uh, so the weight of A it's going to be 0.3 g and the weight of b is going to be 0.5 g and notice that I have converted from 300 grams to 0.3 kilograms and from 560 grams to 0.56 kilograms uh, because um, the resultant force is mass times acceleration works when the mass is given in kilograms. Uh, and I was also told that uh, the scale pan is raised vertically with acceleration 0 0.8 metres per second per second. So I'm going to draw in a direction of motion arrow here, going up like so with acceleration of 0 0.8. Uh, and in part A, uh, I'm being asked to find the tension in the string. Now for part A, uh, I'm going to resolve for the whole system. using resultant force equals mass times acceleration. So, forces acting in the direction of motion, which is upwards, are just T. And the forces opposing the motion, acting in the opposite direction, are both of these two weights. Uh, so I'm going to combine them to be 0.86G. Um, and that is equal to the mass of the system, the total mass of the system, which is 0.86. Uh, multiplied by the acceleration, which is 0 0.8. So, 0 0.86 times by 9.8, because 9.8 is the value that we use for G in mechanics, uh, is 8.428. And 0 0.86 times by 0 0.8 is 0 0.688. Adding that 8.428, I get that the tension in my string is 9.116 newtons. Okay, part B then. We are being asked for uh, the force exerted on mass B by mass A. So we just need to consider here what's happening. The force is acting on mass B. Well, mass B is being pushed up by the floor or the base of the scale pan, um, and it is going to be receiving a force downwards from A, because if you think of mass B as being this here, it's being raised up, mass A is sitting on top of it, so there's a contact force, mass A exerting downwards on mass B. Uh, so what I'm just going to do 
uh, is to draw a quick diagram of just mass B. And the forces acting on mass B, well, I've got its weight, uh, which is 0 0.56 G. Uh, I'll just draw in the base of the scale pan here as well, where B is uh, resting. Okay, fine. We have a reaction force here, which is raising B. However, we also have a force that A is exerting on B. Now the issue I've got here is I've got two unknowns. But this force here that A is exerting on B, there is going to be an equal and opposite reaction force that B exerts on A. So if I consider particle A, I have this force here, equal and opposite, which I called reaction 2. And the only other force I need to consider on A is its weight, which is 0.3 G. So even though I'm asked for the force exerted on B, the way that I'm going to calculate it is by considering the force exerted on A, because A will exert an equal and opposite reaction force on B. So what I'm going to do is set up a resultant force equation, resultant force equals mass times acceleration, just for particle A. It's still accelerating upwards, so it's going to be the reaction that I called R2, minus its weight, which is the force downwards, is going to equal its mass multiplied by its acceleration. Uh, so R2 uh, minus 0 0.3 times 9.8. It's going to be equal to 0 0.24. And when I add that over, I get my reaction to be 3.18 newtons. Now that is the force being exerted by B on A, and it is also the force being exerted um, by A on B. So that's done that. Right, part C where we're asked the force exerted on B by the, by the scale pan. Well, the force exerted on B by the scale pan is what we've done here for, uh, that we've called R1. So if part C, we consider this reaction 1 that we're trying to find out, and we now know that R2 is 3.18 newtons, we can work out, using F equals MA, this force reaction 1, which is the uh, base of the scale pan exerting on mass B. So again, resolving in the direction of motion, resultant force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, forces up, which is R1, the one we're trying to find. Minus forces down, which is this R2, 3.18. And the weight of B, which is 0.56G, is going to equal the mass of just B, because we're resolving for B, multiplied by 0 0.8. Uh, so working this out here, R1 minus 3.18 minus 0 0.56 times 9.8, which is 5.488, is equal to 0 0.56 times 0 0.8, which is 0 0.448. Uh, and when we add those two values over, we get R1 to be 9.116 newtons, which you'll recognise as being the answer to part A, the same as the tension in the cable. And what that means is that we can actually think of part C in a slightly different way. With part C, if this is the bottom of the scale pan, then I can actually think of A and B being a single mass. 
0 0.86. And I can think of the force that the base of the scale pan exerts on this whole mass as being this R1 that we were trying to find. And if I set up a Newton's law equation with this, um, it'll work the same way. Because if I use resultant force equals mass times acceleration, reaction 1 minus 0 0.86g will equal 0 0.86 multiplied by the acceleration. And solving that through just as in part A, I'm going to get that to be 9.116 newtons. Um, and you might be thinking, well, what about R2? Well, R2 is the force A exerts on B. It's also the force that B exerts on A. So when we're considering the force being exerted on the two particles combined by the floor at the base of the scale pan, we don't need to consider those two forces because we're treating this as a single object. Uh, so whichever one of those ways makes sense to you to find that reaction one, go with it. But the important thing is to consider whatever particle you're resolving for, what are all the forces acting on that particle, and then when you use your resultant force equation, make sure you only use the mass of the particle that you're using. Thank you.